Hello everybody, I'm Andros Chakitano from TU Delft and in this presentation we'll discuss the main results of the first Lagrangian particle tracking challenge. The work has been conducted in collaboration with Benjamin Leclerc from Monera and Andros Schroeder from DLR within the framework of the Horizon 2020 project HOMER funded by the European Commission. As you know, the last 10 years have seen a transition in terms of three-dimensional flow measurements from tomographic PIV and cross-correlation based analysis to Lagrangian particle tracking or LPT. There are several advantages associated with the uh, Lagrangian particle tracking. First of all, time efficiency, data compression because we can reconstruct the volumes uh, particle-based rather than voxel-based. We get kind of the maximum uh, information from the particles because we get one velocity vector or even acceleration vector per particle. So it's not, the information is not averaged in a volume and we get very little gauss particles. There are also some drawbacks uh, that are associated with the fact that uh, the information we obtain is scattered at the particle's location and for that we need typically a uh, reduction of the data mapping in a, on a Cartesian grid. So in this project, we aim at uh, uh, comparing different uh, Lagrangian particle tracking algorithms that have been developed during the years. In order to perform this comparison, we made use of a synthetic experiment based on numerical simulations performed at Onera. Details about the simulations in the database are reported in a presentation by Benjamin Leclerc, also at this conference. The simulations reproduce the wall bounded flow in the near wake of a cylinder. You see here a cylinder having one centimeter diameter, also at one centimeter from the wall. The bulk velocity that is here from left to right is at 0 0.667 meter per second and the fluid is air. We simulated an experiment where the uh, flow domain was imaged by four cameras placed at the top of the domain and we provided the participants with the, the raw images from the four cameras and of course also with the calibration images. We consider three different image acquisition strategies, namely two pulse with one pulse per frame on two frames, four pulse with two frames having two pulses each and finally time resolved. Also we considered varying values of the number of particles per pixel from very low 0.005 to pretty high with respect to standard experiments, so PPP of 0 0.16 for 2 pulse and 4 pulse cases and 0 0.20 for the time resolve case. In terms of out output quantities, we requested the participants to provide the particles positions at all cases, so 2 pulse, 4 pulse and time resolved, and when possible also uh, the particles velocities and acceleration, so namely for the 4 pulse and the time resolve case. Six participants took part of the challenge, namely DLR, ETH Zurich, INRAI, IoT, LaVision and ONERA. Here you can find the algorithms that have been used together with the references where you can get more information about the different algorithms. Here I want to highlight that DLR and LaVision used similar algorithms, namely Shake the Box with the multi-pulse implementation for the two-pulse and four-pulse cases. Also, IoT uses a similar algorithm based on the Open LPT project from the Johns Hopkins University. In case of ETH Zurich, instead, a variational approach was used where the particles positions and the dense flow field, velocity field, were reconstructed jointly by solving an optimization problem uh, where also constraints on the flow physics, for instance, the thought that the flow should be divergent free because it's compressible, were imposed. In case of INRAI, instead, a particle reconstruction based on IPR, the iterative particle reconstruction algorithm, was used together with machine learning approaches for the optimization based on kernel methods. Finally, for the case of ONERA, a voxel-based reconstruction was performed and a cross-correlation analysis was conducted in order to determine a predictor of the flow field that then was updated by means of a global optimization. Let's start discussing the results from the two-pulse case. What we see here is the particles reconstructed from different algorithms at different PPP values. 
The black circles are reconstructed particles, whereas the red crosses are the true particles that we know, of course, from the numerical simulation. What we see is that, that the lowest PPP, most algorithms, are able to reconstruct correctly the particles, except the ETH Zurich algorithm that produces several Gauss particles. At higher PPPs, we see that the problem is more evident also for other algorithms, for instance, the Lagrangian PID algorithm from INRAE and the old UNRA algorithm where several particles are missed. Finally, at the highest PPP of 0 0.16, we see that both DLR and LaVision algorithms retain their pretty good uh, capability of reconstructed particles with only few ghost or missed particles, whereas in the case of ETH Zurich algorithm, several ghost particles are present. When we analyze quantitatively these results, so we uh, see here the percentage of correct particles as a function of the PPP, and the, in this case we see that the amount of particles that are correctly constructed is very high, always above 80% for all cases. Uh, in the case of DLR and LaVision, this percentage is close to 100%, whereas in the other cases it decreases slightly with the PPP but always staying above 80%. In the middle plot, instead we see the percentage of ghost particles as a function of the PPP. And we see that in most cases the ghost particles are uh, really few, typically of less than 1% or in some cases a few percent. The only exception is the ETH Zurich algorithm when the number of ghost particles is comparable with the number of true particles. Finally, on the right hand side we see the error magnitude, so the positional error as a function of the PPP, uh, both in millimeters as well as in uh, uh, pixel units, so in terms of uh, average back projected pixel. We see a slight increase of the PPP, of the uh, error magnitude with the PPP for most of the algorithms. Uh, for the best algorithms, the error magnitude is of the order of 0 0.05 uh, pixels and increases slightly with the PPP. In other cases, for instance, for the Onera algorithm, we see a sharper increase with the PPP. In the case of the ETH Zurich um, algorithm, the error magnitude is approximately constant and close to 0 0.25 pixels. In this slide, we see the results for the four pulse case. Again, for the four pulse case, we have only two participants that are DLR and LaVision. And the results here are shown again in terms of reconstructed particles and true particles at two PPPs, 0 0.05 and 0 0.60. We see that in both cases, the reconstruction quality is very good. At 0 0.05, all particles are correctly reconstructed at 0 0.16, we see that in the case of DLR, we don't really spot any missed or ghost particles, and in case of the LaVision algorithm, we see only few missed particles. When we compute the, the percentage of correct particles as a function of the PPP, we see that the DLR algorithm returns 100% or close to 100% correct particles. Uh, in the case of the LaVision algorithm, we have a slight decrease of the uh, percentage of correct particles from 100% to about 90% at the highest PPP. The number of ghost particles is basically null, is typically below 0.1%. Here we see the results in terms of position, velocity and acceleration errors. On top of the results of the two participants, we also have the results from Hacker, that is a fictitious participant that took the correct particles positions that of course we know from the simulation and fitted the second order polynomial to retrieve position, velocity and acceleration at the intermediate time instant. For what concerns the position we see that the hacker yields uh, errors that are of the order of 0 0.005 pixels rather independent on the PPP whereas the two participants produce errors that are starting from 0 0.03 pixels at the lowest PPP and these errors increase more or less linearly with the PPP reaching 0.08 pixel for LaVision at the highest PPP. In terms of velocity, the errors are of the order of 0.4% of the bulk velocity, and the difference between the participants' results and the hacker results are much smaller than for the position. 
we see that for um, the hacker the error is about 0.3% of the pipe velocity whereas for the two participants the errors are slightly above up to 0.6% at the highest PPP. A different situation of course for the acceleration. Here we plotted also the magnitude of the true acceleration that of course we know from the numerical simulations. We see that already the hacker that would be the result with the perfect particles reconstruction yields errors on the acceleration that are about 60% of the actual acceleration magnitude. And of course, the two participants, VLR and LaVision, yields errors that are slightly larger than that. This gives a good indication that the errors on the acceleration are not really due to the uncertainty in the particle reconstruction, but are instead mainly due to the limited temporal resolution of this synthetic experiment. Finally, we're going to discuss the results for the time resolve case. Again, we see here they reconstructed and true particles for different algorithms and different PPPs. At the lower PPP values, things work pretty well for all algorithms with most of the particles correctly reconstructed, except in the case of the IOP algorithm where many missed particles are present. Problems mainly arise at the highest PPP, where we see that, for instance, both the INRI LAPIP algorithm and the IoT algorithm miss many particles or produce several ghosts, whereas the DLR and the LaVision algorithms maintain their very high quality of the particle reconstruction. When we look at the percentage of correct particles as a function of the PPP, we see, as confirmed from the previous slide, that the DLR and LaVision algorithm produce more or less 100% of correct particles, and the same, of course, also for the INRI algorithms up to a PPP of 0.12. At higher PPP, the INRI and Lagrangian PIB algorithm yields a lower percentage of correct particles that decreases down to about, to less, to about 10% at the highest PPP. In the case of the IoT algorithm, instead, we see a continuous decrease of the percentage of correct particles with increasing PPP. In terms of ghost particles, basically no ghost particles are present for most of the algorithms, except in the case of the Lagrangian PIB algorithm at the highest PPP. In this slide, we show the position, velocity, and acceleration errors. For what concerns the position error, we see that for the DLR algorithm, we have position errors that are below 0.05 pixels, whereas in the other cases, we see a more pronounced increase uh, of the error with the PPP, especially in the IoT case, the error increases up to 0.3 pixels, or in the Lagrangian PIB case, it increases up to about 0.5 pixels. For the velocity and acceleration, we show also the result from Hacker, who took the correct particles position at three time instants, centered around the intermediate time instant, and fitted a second order polynomial. We see that the velocity error from DLR is very close to the velocity error from Hacker and is below 0.5% of the bulk velocity, whereas for the other algorithm we see errors that are typically of the order of 1 to 3% of the uh, bulk velocity. In terms of acceleration, we also plot here the actual acceleration magnitude. We see that the typical errors of the different algorithms are between 60 and 70% of the acceleration magnitude, and even with the hacker we get an error that is as large as 50% of the actual acceleration magnitude. Uh, for some algorithms we see errors that are even larger than the acceleration magnitude, mainly due to the presence of some outliers. To conclude, a synthetic database has been produced for the evaluation of the performance of different LPT algorithms and three different image acquisition strategies have been investigated, investigated namely 2PULSE, 4PULSE and time result and the performance of these algorithms have been assessed considering seeding densities between 0.005 and 0.20. We see clear differences among the different algorithms, in particular for the best algorithms the uh, particle reconstruction can be very accurate, up to 100% correct particles, up to the highest PPP, and 0% ghost particles with correct positional errors that are below 0.05 pixels. Velocity errors for the best algorithms are of the order of 0.5% of the infinity, whereas acceleration errors are significantly larger, typically up to 50% of the actual acceleration magnitude. The next steps in this project 
will be to assess different timing strategies in order to check in which conditions it is possible to improve the accuracy of the acceleration. With this, I would like to conclude and of course I will be glad to answer your questions.